We've had individual break-ins, but not a mass, an episode of mass destruction, so it's very concerning. Right now at 6, a community concerned for safety after more than 40 cars were broken into over the weekend. Tips on what you can do to keep the crime out of your neighborhood. And UConn keeping the crown on the court. The Huskies are headed at the Sweet 16 at 6.15. We're going to have more on their big win and what's next. Also, Ed, never too early to start saving for college when financial experts say is the best time to do it and how your kids can get involved. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good Monday morning. Thanks so much for starting your new week off with us here at Fox 61 and Fox 61 Plus America Areas. And I'm Keith McGilvery, starting with a check of your forecast. Meteorologist Matt Scott standing by with a case of the Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should well, speak for myself if you can't. I'm there tell with you. He, yeah. you. You limit talking. <laughs> Which, as saying that to a news anchor, that, that's kind of tough to do when you think about it. But uh, good Monday morning to you. Uh, here's what you need to know uh, before you go. Uh, we have a, a ch kind of chilled temperature. Temperature's not bad and a little wind, and it feels like the low to mid 20s out there, but that's fairly seasonal. Your seven day is mostly dry in spite of what we're going to show you on the seven day. You're going to see a lot of raindrops. Well, I think it's a little overblown. We'll show you that coming up. Uh, a little more in the way of cloud coverage. Uh, off towards the eastern side of the state along the 395 corridor. That said, speaking of overblown, the winds are a little overblown as in they're coming in out of the north and the east at about 10 to 15 miles an hour for some of you. Temperatures 27 to 34, but look at the winds 5 to 15 miles an hour out there and they'll be a little breezy, especially as we go into the afternoon. So the real feel is 18 in Torrington, 19 in Waterbury on the way up to the low to mid 20s uh, for the high schoolers getting on the bus this hour. 30 degrees now this hour for the school bus forecast. 48 is just about seasonal. Few clouds out there. No real worries for the forecast for today. We'll talk about what's in store for the week rain wise. See if there's anything other than rain coming up in a few minutes. 602. You know, it's always funny, Symphony, when, when you know, you and I have been here since 4 a.m. And, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, Keith and Erica, they're just coming on. They're, they're talking how tired they are. And we've, we've been doing this for two hours. <laughs> And the show keeps going. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Coffee Matt. for everybody. <laughs> we, we all need a little boost. Okay, let's get you up to speed with what's happening in the 6 o'clock hour. If you're just waking up and you're heading out the door in the Ridgefield area, here's what you need to know this morning. There is a road closure happening on Route 116. That area is blocked between Tacora Trail and Worcester Heights Drive due to a downed tree that fell into some power lines. It doesn't appear to be impacting traffic in that area. Uh, switching now to a live look at I-84 through downtown Hartford. The traffic volume is definitely picking up as folks return to the workplace on this Monday. Smooth sailing on 9184 and Route 2. And let's wrap with a quick look at the New Haven drive times. Seeing our usual minor delay heading down to Bridgeport on 95 South. Traffic speeds moving at 47 miles per hour and you'll get there in about 28 minutes. We have your next update coming up at 630. Thank you, Somebody This morning, police looking for the people who broke into more than three dozen cars at an apartment complex in Rocky Hill. Yeah, police say most of the cars were locked, but that didn't stop the burglars from smashing their way in. And police tell us this is happening a lot more than you might think. Fox 61's Lindsay Kane is live in Rocky Hill now with more details. Lindsay. Hi, good morning. Police say more than 43 cars were broken into here at Stepney Place Apartments. Now, most of those cars were locked and the glass was shattered. People that live here say this isn't the first time something like this has happened before. Now, police say they were called here just before 6 o'clock yesterday morning. When officers first arrived on scene, they saw a white sedan in the parking lot with one person actively breaking a car window. When the burglars saw the officer, they drove over a grassy area and sped off. Police did not chase them. Again, 43 cars were broken into, most of them locked. Now, workers at the nearby AutoZone say their store was flooded with people trying to get their vehicles fixed. We opened at 7.30, I want to say about 8 a.m., um, just nonstop. People coming in, in the, by the groups, by the twos, by the fives, just with the same story. They just took all the temporary glass kits that we had, and we sold out by about 9 a.m. Some tips for keeping your car and belongings safe. Take valuables out of your car and keep your car neat. 
thieves will break in to go through your items if it's messy in case there's something valuable hidden. Hide spare change, sunglasses, phone chargers, and other accessories. And lastly, park smart if you can. Park in well lit and busy areas. Try to avoid parking near larger vehicles, fences, and foliage. Now, the search continues for those people who allegedly broke into all of these vehicles. Police are asking anyone with any information to call Rocky Hill Police. Live in Rocky Hill this morning, Lindsay Kane, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Lindsay, thanks so much for the update there. Well, meantime, this afternoon, lawmakers are going to introduce legislation that would require car dealers to repair outstanding safety recalls before reselling the vehicles. Senator Richard Blumenthal says he wants to ensure the safety and reliability of used cars, and he's going to share more details about the bill during a news conference at the state capitol this afternoon at 1.30 in Hartford. We now know the name of the man who died in what New London police are calling an attempted murder-suicide. That man identified as 31-year-old Jamal Brooks. Police saying he died from a single gunshot wound. A 30-year-old woman who police say was shot several times still in the hospital in critical condition. Police not releasing her name because she's believed to be a victim of domestic violence right now. Uh, first responders found two children ages 5 and 9 in the apartment. They were not physically hurt. If you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, there are resources available, including CT Safe Connect, a 24-7 hotline hosted by the Connecticut Coalition Against Domestic Violence. You can call or text the number on your screen or reach out via email. CT Safe Connect available in multiple languages. You can remain anonymous, and we have more information at fox61.com. Two bouncers are recovering this morning after they were stabbed while trying to break up a bar fight in Southington. Two of the three people who police charged in the incident are due in court today. Police say two men got into an argument at the 75 Center. When a bouncer asked them to leave, one man allegedly punched him. Officers saying that's when the sister of one of the men got involved. She's accused of pepper spraying the bouncer and stabbing him in the face before stabbing a second bouncer several times in the head and neck. A gas station employee was hurt during an armed robbery. Police say it happened at about four yesterday afternoon at the Snoco on Berlin Road in Cromwell. Officers say four people entered the store. One of them allegedly pointed a gun at an employee. The other stole items from the store. Police say the robbers also grabbed money before they took off and they were last seen traveling west on Route 372 in Cromwell. 11 people out of their homes this morning after a fire in New Haven. This happened at about 1230 yesterday afternoon in the first block of Chatham Street. That's in the Fairhaven neighborhood. Crews had the fire under control in about an hour and a half and everyone made it out safely. The Red Cross is now helping the six adults and five children get back on their feet. And to our nation's capital now, the federal government now has funding for the rest of the fiscal year. President Joe Biden put pen to paper and signed a $1.2 trillion spending package on Saturday, Biden calling the deal a compromise and said Republicans and Democrats did not get everything they wanted. The budget does not include money for Ukraine, Taiwan or Israel. It does include money for the border, as well as money to expand access to child care and invest in cancer research. Meantime, the White House is vowing to repeal one provision of the spending plan. It essentially bans the LGBTQ pride flag from flying over U.S. embassies. There is a line in the law that permits only certain flags, including the American flag, POW MIA flag, and the hostage and wrongful detainee flag. Pride flags and other flags are allowed in other parts of the embassies. The First Lady of New Jersey is suspending her run for U.S. Senate. Tammy Murphy hoped to take the seat currently held by Bob Menendez. He is not seeking re-election right now while he faces corruption charges. Murphy says continuing the race would involve a diverse and negative camp a divisive rather and negative campaign. Her departure leaves an open spot for Democratic Congressman Annie Kim to be nominated for the Senate seat. All right, Instagram has started an automatic clampdown on how much political content appears in users' feeds. The move is part of an initiative that Instagram announced last month. So the app will stop proactively recommending political, co political content posted on accounts that users don't already follow. Now, there is a way for users to get around this political content curb. If you want to open up the political spigot again on Instagram, open up the app on your smartphone and then tap the three dash menu at the top right. 
navigate to settings and privacy and then choose content preferences and then open the political content menu. Find and turn on the don't limit option. Once that's done, you should be able to see posts relating to government, elections, and other political matters shared from accounts that you do not follow. And I'm Ryder here, the primary in our state's right around the corner. For the first time in Connecticut, you'll be able to vote early in person. Early voting is available tomorrow, starting tomorrow through Thursday, as well as Saturday. The polls are going to be closed on Friday in observance of Good Friday. Polling hours are 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. To see where you can vote early, just head over to our website, fox61.com.